So this video for Bricks, we're going to see how we can use the nestable elements inside Bricks for tabs and accordions, how we can apply a custom loop to this, and how we can have dynamic data displayed across the tabs or accordion sections and the content inside them. This is super useful if you want to create things like FAQs and those kinds of things, and you want dynamic data to power it all, you can do it using this method. So let's take a quick look at the end result, and then I'll show you how to build it for yourself. Now, obviously, from a design point of view, this looks pretty boring and bland, but I have removed all those distractions just so you can see the fundamental functions behind it. So what we have is we've got a tab section. We've got our various different tab elements at the top so we can navigate through. And as we go through, you'll see this pulls in content in the main area. And this is pulling content in from Gutenberg, so standard WordPress native posts. So any content inside there, like images, like code blocks and so on, will all be displayed inside you. This is perfect if you want to create something that has a lot of information condensed into a small area of space without kind of going crazy with the design. Now we see what we're going to create. Let's jump over to Bricks and just take a look at how we can recreate this for ourselves. So first things first, I've created a section with a container, and we're going to come over to our elements, and we're going to search for tabs. There's two options inside you, and you'll see the same if you're using the accordion. You'll have the tabs or the accordion, and you'll have tabs or accordion nestable. The basic non-nestable versions are legacy elements. These are not particularly accessible. They're not particularly great, and generally, you should not use them. The tabs and accordion nestable is where the real power comes in. So we're going to choose that from our options, and you'll see this creates a basic layout. So one of the key benefits of using these nestable alternatives is you'll notice from the structure we've got things like titles with basic text, we've got rich text, and so on. So you're using standard native elements inside Bricks gives us more control over what we want to do. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of this second title because we don't need a second one. We're going to use dynamic data and a custom loop to be able to cycle through these. So let's get rid of those. So we've got tab content and we've got tab menu. So tab menu is the tabs, title one, title two. Tab content is what you'll find inside each of those tabs. So if we expand this out, there's our first, there's our second. Let's delete the second one. Let's expand the content out. Let's delete the second pane. And now we have a simpler, more basic structure. One tab, one pane for the content. So there's the basics in place. Next, we've got to go and tell it how to kind of loop these things through and connect the dynamic data and so on. So to start off with, let's deal with the tabs themselves. Let's close this tab content up. We'll come back to that in a moment. So what we need to do is we need to create a loop that's going to loop through these titles and create the various different tabs for us. We'll select our title, come over to content, and you'll notice we've got the query loop. Let's enable this and choose the kind of query we want to use. So you'll see this already pulls in this title one through six, because we've got six different articles, because it defaults to the normal posts in WordPress. So if we open this up, the query, you'll see this is, like I say, default into posts. You could obviously change this to other things if you want to. And depending upon what you change them to will depend upon how you configure things. If you want more comprehensive examples on how to utilize these nestable options, let me know in the comment section below. I'll create some more advanced options. But once you understand the fundamentals, it helps you get an awful long way in how you can use these with dynamic data. So we'll leave it set to posts. Post is fine. If you had custom post types, obviously, you could use those inside here as well. You can choose how you want to organize these. We'll specify we want to use them by title, sending or descending. We're going to limit these to six, because obviously, if you have a lot of posts or FAQs or whatever, you have to make sure that you're using the right kind of nestable elements, so an accordion versus tabs, and you know just take into consideration those various different simple things. Okay, so there's the basics all set up. So now we've got our query enabled. Let's come into our basic text and change this from title one. Get rid of that. Use our dynamic data. Come to our post title. Give it a second, and there you can see there's our post one through five and my edited post. These are just the titles of your posts. Again, you need to be careful. If you've got long titles, this is going to look a little bit messed up. So be careful on how you set things up inside you. But that's the first part done. We've now created our tabs, which we can switch through. So let's close those down, and let's now focus on the tab content. So for this one, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to select the pane in this example, come over to our content, enable our query loop, open this up, and specify we're going to use posts. 
Simple as that. We don't need to worry about ordering a saw because this is just going to pull the content into that tabbed area. So let's close that down. Let's come into our rich text. And again, like we did before, let's remove this placeholder. Click on our little dynamic data icon, come to post. And this example, we're going to use our post content. Now, this may pull in gibberish like you can see here. Don't worry about it. This is just inside Bricks itself. Once you preview this and use it on your live site, that will be replaced by the actual live content. So let's save this and let's preview it. And there we go. There's our end result. Post one, post two, post three, four, five, and so on. So you can see this will pull in whatever content we have inside that post. In this example, it's just using standard Gutenberg content. So we can create content inside the normal WordPress editor and pull it in inside you. And now we can go through and customize the look and feel of this and do whatever we kind of want to do to it to make it look the way that we want it to look. So there you go. That's how easy it is to start using dynamic data, creating custom loops using the nestable elements inside Bricks. As I said earlier on, if you want more comprehensive, complex examples of how to use this, let me know in the comment section down below. Hopefully you found this useful. Until next time, take care.